like to make a motion to approve uh, the meeting minutes from the April 1st, 2021 meeting as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Carl Compagna. <coughs> we do a roll call of the board, please. That'd be great. Carl, uh, I was not going to say because I didn't yeah. want to say anything. Okay. No. Good call. Um, Carl? Yes. Linda? Yes. No? Yes. Carmilla? Yes. Larry? Yes. Yes. Linda can vote too. Linda was there. Oh, sorry, Linda. I got it. Okay. Then I and Captain McGowan was on the on the call too. Yes. Okay. The vote is unanimous. All right. Good. So moving right along here. So the first item on the agenda for tonight is. Uh, Steve, and then do the photo log. Is that you want to do it like that? Yes, that's fine. Steve. Okay. All right. Um, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, progress at the Senior Center Recreation Center uh, project. Um, essentially, uh, the contractor, uh, the forces are, are, are somewhat low right now. They've been uh, performing uh, punch lists on the uh, interior of the building, mainly the the, uh, the senior center. Um, we've uh, issued uh, initial punch list for the interior, exterior roof, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, civil, and landscape. Um, and we actually started doing some of the the back punch for the interior of the senior center uh, this past uh, Wednesday, checking off uh, what they have uh, stated is complete and anything that may actually not be complete. Um, work on the site has, has been uh, pretty much exclusively by landscaping. Uh, landscape has been back for, for a few weeks now. Um, they've got their plants and trees. They've, they've set quite a few of them based on the conversation they had with the uh, landscape architect who was on site to, to, um, to locate them. <coughs> Uh, they've also uh, done some initial uh, hydro seeding. Uh, they're not 100% done yet, but um, uh, that uh, hopefully it, it hopefully doesn't get washed away between today and tomorrow. Um, yeah. We do have, uh, unfortunately, we do have one tree that's backboarded, which is the tree that planning board wanted to add by the gym, but we know the location uh, and um, they'll plant it when it comes in. And, uh, and we'll uh, certainly have the landscape architect back out to inspect now that a lot of the areas are done. Um, <clears throat> then we also, uh, part one of, one of the items that we had was, was we've had some tile issues that we've talked about before. They did do a, a number of uh, repairs on the quarry tile in the kitchen. Um, we still got to look at, at some of the areas and may still be some some issues, but, but they've, they've done a, a first round of, of those repairs. The tile for <coughs> completion of the toilet room at the senior center and at the rec center, uh, right now it's not due to come in until May for the delivery of the tile. So that's going to be that's going to be pushed off a, a little ways. Um, <coughs> the uh, 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 This past Wednesday we opened up the uh, parking lot and the main entry to the rec center uh, that we just, just installed that's been cleaned up and is open for use. Uh, and we've, uh, uh, we've let Mara know that she can use that. If it was uh, just an emergency egress, it can now be used as an entry. Um, training is ongoing. Uh, we had uh, uh, lighting control training with, uh, with the elect uh, electrical contractor this past Wednesday. Uh, we've got um, the, the IT low voltage training coming up. Uh, I believe it's a week after next because um, a lot of people on vacation next week. So that's coming up and that'll be a, <coughs> attended by staff and, and Mike Mitchell. 
Um, and uh, Mike Mitchell has had his people there uh, uh, setting up computers um, throughout the building. Uh, I saw that this week. And um, another item that we, we dealt with in the last couple of weeks, we did have a meeting <coughs> with the police chief to, to review the exterior lighting and how it is it, 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 effect on the ability for the security cameras to record around the building, the exterior security cameras. Um, and we've, uh, we've initiated uh, basically a, a, a test program for um, having the exterior building lights, not the light bulbs, but just the building lights <clears throat> going on. We moved it up to 7 o'clock because it, it's staying lighter now, but, but um, staying on until 6 a.m. Uh, because we were not, after, with the light shutting up at 9 o'clock, Previously, the, the cameras were really not <clears throat> picking up anything beyond a couple feet from, uh, so even that wasn't clear. So um, we reviewed it with, uh, with the chief, with, with Mike Mitchell, who's, who's sort of, uh, you know, in charge of the other security cameras, uh, Linda, myself, um, and Kevin Kelly. Uh, so and, and also notified the, the planning board. So we're gonna we're gonna do a couple weeks of that and see what kind of uh, kind of uh, images we get off the cameras um, with with the light on. Uh, so that's the, the that's the just the pole. that's just the porch lights, right? You're saying? Or the that is the wall sconces at the doors, and then the uh, the recess uh, uh, light pictures that are that are in the porch ceiling. Okay. That back stairwell, Steve, the veteran stairwell. Lights okay there. So these, 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 these are these are all uh, uh, the exterior lights. Okay. Yep. No, the, the interior interior we're leaving, we're leaving alone. And then uh, we were going to uh, set the uh, uh, the light bulbs to turn on uh, at set, go on at seven and nine instead of six to nine because it's it's, it's really still light out at six. Uh, Steve, I, I have a question. Go ahead, Carl. Go ahead, Carl. Uh, on, the, uh, on the cameras, are they uh, the type of camera that can be that can function in a low level light situation, or do they need a certain level of light intensity? You know, they they do they do function with 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 full levels of light. But with, with it being completely dark, uh, it really wasn't, it was getting a little bit from, you know, but it, it stopped at a certain point uh, from the camera. And, and even that probably wouldn't have been a clear photo. And, and it, you know, it's mainly, you know, this camera's on the inside of the building. So if someone, someone breaks into the building, they're going to be caught on the camera and the light's going to go on because they're on occupancy sensors. But if someone is doing something to the outside of the building, then that's, that's, that's where we want the exterior cameras to, to pick up that activity. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. Good question, Carl. Thank you. All right. How, Can how I ask a quick question on the parking lot lights, if I may? Go ahead, Stephanie, yes. Um, do you know if they're, are they dimmable or are they just on off? Sorry, I think I may miss that part. Uh, well, that's, it, it's sort of a, uh, <laughs> I know I'm asking yeah. a, lo a loaded question. That's, that's okay. I've, I've, I've answered it a number of times now. Uh, they, they are they are supposed to they're on off until nine o'clock uh, with with full intensity off off of the uh, the time clock. They are supposed to have a motion sensor to uh, to activate after nine o'clock to illuminate the light at a lower uh, lower a lower illumination. For um, you know the period of, of you know nine o'clock till till, till till the morning. That has that has not been set up as, as of yet. Uh, there there was an issue with 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 the engineer and and how uh, uh, things were written up in the contract, which is being dealt with right now by the architect, the engineer, and the lighting designer. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I, somebody somebody quoted me at yeah, that. At the town meeting, that's why I was asking. Yeah, yeah. No, they, it, 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 it's mainly someone. If someone drives into the the parking lot, 
Uh, the lights are, are, are super long, but not at full intensity. Now, when, when I was having this discussion with, with the police chief, he said that they'll probably be in and out of that parking lot four times a night. So those things are going to be going on and off. Once, once they're set up. Got it. Thank you, Steve. And we're still having the direction we're moving forward, setting those up in that manner, right? Yes, uh, we, we talked about that with the chief doing, and that, that, that's still moving, moving forward. Okay. However, however, it needs to get done. Okay. Uh, how, do you, how do we make out with a mortar color? Does that get squared away? Uh, they, we, we reviewed it this week that the mason was, uh, did a mock-up because he had to, he had to put, um, had to put a patch kit on the, uh, the precast band because when they were doing the washing of the, of the, uh, the brick on the east side, they, they did some damage to the precast band. Um, the architect looked at it uh, uh, on Wednesday. I asked her to please bring, bring her photos back to her office to review it with, with, uh, with the senior staff. Okay, so, so it's still, it, it's still it's the fix still is still... A process. It's not done yet. Okay. It's not done. All right. And was the ERV fixed up in the roof, the motor and the bearings and everything? No, the, uh, the ERB, they finally got a delivery date on uh, the part, and uh, I believe they are looking at, I don't have it from you, the, um, I guess the, 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 20, the 23rd is, is when they're planning on coming out to install it, then they'll have the balancer come back out and, and re rebalance or really balance for the first time properly and then get uh, set up with Fitzmai and Kachi for, for final commissioning. Okay, cool. Um, so they've been waiting for the park for a few weeks. So. Okay. Has the spray testing been done yet? No, the, uh, it, it's ready to go, but it was um, the ability to, to uh, schedule it with BEA and I believe it's going to be right now the week after after April vacation because some people are gone. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and any uh, any word or any movement on the the generator, the possibility of the, the horizontal stacks? No, there, there, there's no update on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments from the board? Um, yeah, this is Carl Campagna. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead, Carl. Uh, Steve, at the main entrance, when you come off of First Parish Road, there are two small islands which direct the traffic entering and exiting. Uh, the concrete on those islands are all cracked and, and broken up. Plus, the granite curb is only up around two inches above the pavement. Are these temporary islands? No, or is the more islands work to be done on them? Well, there's a couple of things here. No, those islands were, were a change. That, there was no islands there originally, but um, because of some, some issues with, with the um, with the abutters, it was decided to uh, change that um, that exit from the, the senior center to be a right turn only. So those islands are there specifically to direct the traffic to the right along with, with the signage and the signage that was installed on the property and the DCW installed the sign across the street. Um, as far as the islands go, that the reveal on that, that granite is only supposed to be three inches for, for, the, uh, for the drawing by, by the engineers because it's supposed to be the island is supposed to be able to be dropped, driven over by, by the fire department because they can't make the swing. They, they have to drive over it. So it, it's sure. built to be driven over, but not, not by your average vehicle, but, but by emergency vehicles. So the problem right. with the cracking is that the, the, the concrete infill cracking uh, we do have on the punch list. Uh, this is actually the second time uh, that, that uh, they put them in and they were, they were the wrong configuration, so they they pulled it out and then they, they installed it again, but now we have the edge cracking because there's, 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 um, 
in the detail that um, that we would be, we're going to change, but there's also um, uh, a way they installed it uh, ended up uh, creating a thinner um, layer of concrete at those edges. So that that's why they cracked. So that 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 uh, uh, needs to be uh, taken out and, and uh, reinstalled. At at uh, at more thickness, or are they still going to keep it uh, shell, a thin layer of concrete? Well, no, we, we want to make sure they have thickness, and, and the engineer may be, what we're trying to do is not, not dig up the, uh, the granite. The, the, the granite, you know, right. It, 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 you know, it's already in, in the final phase, so they may, can, they may, and they haven't, they haven't got back to us, but the engineer may consider letting them put in a different material, but I don't know what that is, and, and I, I just want to make sure that it, it's the proper stuff, because there is, there is um, some requirements of why we put those in that we're going to have to stick to. Uh, if I can suggest something that you can throw out to the engineer, if they've considered the, the, uh, those concrete parking grids, which, which are strong enough to accept a truck type of traffic, Okay. Uh, again, I, I just throw throw that out as a thought. So, all right. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Steve, this is Joe and East. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, yep. I have a question for you, Steve. Steve, uh, you, you mentioned the uh, setting the, the the lights to come on at seven because of the sun. You know, because of the longer days. Does the, does the lighting control, does it not have the ability to more or less just follow the sun so it comes on at okay. sun, sunset and then sunset in December is 4.30 and sunset in July is 8 o'clock? Or do we constantly have to change it? No, according to that Christian, it, it does have that option. But on, on the light poles, because we're not leaving them all on all the time, they, they have to do a hard stop at, at 9. So the... the the um, turning them on should should be uh, should be adjustable for the um, for the season. It was it wasn't set up that way initially. For us, when they were doing the, the lighting training uh, on Wednesday, I was there, and, and that's what he stated that they'll be able to um, to be set it up for the uh, sunrise sunset automatic. Yeah, and, and that's that's pretty typical these days. That's why I was wondering why they did it manually and I, I would think in the long run you don't want to do that man you'll be constantly changing them right yeah, right. Turn up well, time's going to be <coughs> turn up times every night so that's easy it's the turn on time right. that you don't yeah well initially they okay. set it up because we, we wanted something set for a, a certain time so it was set at, at at six and that was that was you know it was getting darker much earlier than, than six at that point so yeah, um, I understand. That, that was my friend Justin. Yep. All right. Anything else? No? All right, good. We can move right into the, the photo log here then. I just want to bring that up. Nancy just bring okay. it up here. Let me know when you're set. While we're, we're we're searching for our for our photo doc, I'll, I'll, coming back to, to Joe's comment, Joe, I I also think maybe I'm wrong here, but we're not allowed to have the lights on all night long. So I if they turn if they turned on at seven o'clock at sunset, the abutters are going to go nuts if they're still on at eleven o'clock or twelve o'clock. No, but the. But the lighting control uh, program, and I'm not sure whose it is, Steve, you might comment on that, should have the ability to turn on at sunset and turn off at any uh, any predetermined time. 
Yeah. Right? That's correct. That's the way it should work. And then, you know, once you get into this motion thing, um, that becomes a whole new uh, different. Right. Yeah, it's going to be pretty. And a whole new uh, series of problems. Pretty complex. Too, yeah. Know? Yeah, but I mean, it's not unusual for motion to, to turn those lights on at a very uh, uh, dim, uh, 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 dim level. If yep. someone's driving around yep. at midnight, and, and I think that needs to get resolved. And, and I know you guys have been talking about it, so that, that's correct, though. Good. Yep. All right. The photo logs up here, Steve. Okay. Um, uh, Obviously, the cover sheet is just a, a, a shot from the roof of the B-wing. Uh, that was a that was a little while ago. Um, uh, first photo is uh, mainly these are finished shots of, of, of the interior of the building, the program room number two, with uh, with furniture. Um, next photo is, is the uh, the wellness center um, facing the mirrored wall. With the uh, with the special flooring. Next photo is the cardio room with the equipment spread out. Uh, next photo is program room number one, which is in the, uh, the south uh, east corner of uh, uh, over the multi-purpose room, the east side facing the patio. Uh, patio. Uh, next photo is just the reverse view of program room number one, showing the, uh, yeah. the screen at the, at the head of the room. Next photo is the arts and crafts room. It's facing east, and then arts and crafts room facing west. It does have a, uh, a sink and cabinetry in the upper, upper portion of the uh, photo. Next photo is the uh, activity slash game room with the uh, game table and the pool table, furniture. Uh, next photo is a, just a different view of it facing northwest. And the uh, following picture is the picture of the pool table, furniture in the background. Next photo is the uh, main stairs from the second floor corridor. Uh, you can see the, the, the panel wall at the stairs, um, the hanging light fixture. And next photo is uh, coming down the stairs showing the uh, main lobby and reception area. And next photo is again the, the door down on the stairs uh, showing the Main lobby, the reception area on the, on the right. Next photo is the first floor corridor. Uh, that's facing back towards the uh, main lobby. Speaking, could you put your phone on mute? Hello? If you're not speaking, could you uh, could you mute your phone, please? Here we go. Hmm. Uh, sorry, the next photo is actually in the multi purpose room. It does say main stairs. Uh, uh, next photo is the uh, Cafe, off of that, adjacent to the kitchen, with the uh, showing the furniture and the fireplace uh, bookcases. Um, I suppose just a, a reverse view of that cafe, and then the uh, cafe fireplace. Uh, next photo is the uh, the multi-purpose room with the uh, yeah, audiovisual overhead projector and the screen. Um, we are going to have to get a couple room darkening shades for those two windows because the light is, is bleeding through the backside. Yep. 
Uh, next photo is the uh, patio off the multi-purpose room with, uh, with the new exterior furniture. Uh, next photo is, uh, yeah, this was just as of Wednesday, um, the last of those couple of days they've been doing some hydro seeding and some planting. This is uh, out of the second floor window, um, obviously facing the, uh, uh, the B wing of the gate school. That's the, the pergola on the lower portion of the photograph, top of the pergola. And then uh, this is a photo uh, heading towards uh, First Parish. The original flagpole on the uh, on the right hand side. I'll go house in the back back down the uh, court on the left. The sidewalk is now open to uh, First Parish and uh, I do see people using it, walking their dogs and such. Nice. Uh, next photo is uh, the southwest elevation uh, of the building, which is the main entry at night and that's the uh, showing the illumination of the uh, recess light fixtures and the, uh, the wall sconces. And that's it. Any questions? Very nice. <coughs> that looks great. Very looks nice. Really nice. Looks great. Thanks. Nice. Good. All right, no uh, questions or comments on that? No. <clears throat> All right. Uh, a question, uh, I have a random question. This is JD. Sure, John. Uh, anyone, Steve or? Okay, so the, the five hawks are open and the hydro seat is down. How, how do we stop people from walking all over the hydro seating and, you know, putting their footprint in muddy, in muddy soil that's gonna get real wet and soggy in the next couple of days? Or, or well, I hope people would have a, enough sense not to walk on it. Um, I hear you. So can't, can't guarantee that I know, and you know if, if it if it does, I mean they'll have to they'll have to touch it up. Okay. It's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time for that to, to germinate. Yeah, um, okay. hopefully not too long. I hope. so if the weather's good, um, we're certainly getting some some water. Like I said, I hope we don't have riblets and, wa and some of it washes away, but um, you know, I mean, that's, that's somewhat the risk they take at being in the landscaping business. Yep. If we get a good in my weeks, observation we'll the last two weeks. Sorry. It's okay. So, um, I just if we get a good couple weeks, we'll be good. In my observation in the past you know, couple of weeks, especially with the good weather, truly, as Steve said, people have been using the walking path since the construction fence came down. They are on the sidewalks, though, and they are using them to get from point A to point B or all around the building very happily, I might add. That's good. <clears throat> all right. Uh, so any more questions on the photo log or, or the project, project update? No. I, I have none. All right. I have none. Um, how are we doing on schedule, Steve? I, I see that's on the agenda here, but things uh, looking like they're winding down and everything. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, the, the contract is trying to get um, get their work done so that they can they can move on to the, the next project. Right. Um, you know, we obviously we have you know some some change orders, some financial things to uh, uh, to work through. Um, but you know, they're not uh, you know they're, they're trying to. I mean, their big challenge right now is getting the, getting the sub stack to do do the punch list. And you know, some have been coming back, others maybe not not as much. But um, you know, they they ultimately have to do it, or you know, we're not going to release their uh, their retainers. Okay. In full. At some point, we'll monetize the punch list. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to do the, the back punch. Um, you know, there's quite a few items on it, so it, it takes a bit to go through. But then we'll we'll we'll, we'll monetize it and, um, and and issue that as as really what the um, what a true uh, uh, holdback on retainage is based on the monetized punch list. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, good. Um, any questions on schedule or, or project now? All right, <coughs> I just have, I have some questions here from the town. I guess we can review. Um, there's a whole bunch of them here about, about the hydro seeding and about, you know, um, so basically the, it's not complete yet. It basically it's a, it's a bunch of questions about around the road and first parish and kind of that other, and the, the side, side roads there, it looks like it needs some infill and just, just to be a uh, hydro seeded. So that's just not done yet. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it's, it's, it's a work in progress, and, okay. you know, we do have a professional landscape architect that is, has done that, has done the design, and will be, um, you know, ultimately the one that, that signs off on whether the, the work is done properly or not. Okay. Um, and, uh, if it's, because we know that, we, uh, we, we're, we're aware, we pointed out that, you know, there's some footprints, there's someone drove up on, on something out at First Parish. Yep. Yeah, um, right. that's right. Yeah, that's right. Gate yeah. was. Um, uh, so that, 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 that should be raked out first, but, you know, it's, it's got to be done at some point. Yeah. I see out, out, you know, some of the area concerned were out by First Parish and down and down kind of that by that old Cudworth entrance there that looks like it needs some topsoil and maybe hydro seed. Is that, is that those areas going to get done? Yeah, they've done some of the hydro seeding down in, in, at, at the rec center uh, already. Okay. They did that on Wednesday morning. Okay, cool. All right. Not 100%, but it's, it's, you know, and I, so they may have run out of hydrocy at that point. They weren't on, they weren't on site the, the entire day on, uh, on Wednesday. Okay. All right, so work in progress there. Um, and so as you, you noted some of the plantings were dead and, and the architect reviewing those and getting warranty in those and getting them replaced as needed. There's, there's two that look like they're fully gone. There's also, there's two that may be able to come back. Okay. On on the bigger on the bigger plant, I, I did not check all of the small stuff. Sure. Because it really we want to see whether that comes back and you know some of that ground cover uh, in some of the islands may also be gone. Right. You know, depends how how it how it fits through the winter. Okay. So that's a work in progress, also, and still punch listing those. Yeah. Um. So watering, I mean, the, the landscaper will water the plants through until, when is, who, how's the watering schedule work? Well, right now the, uh, uh, the contractor has requested a, a valve and a backflow preventer and a meter from DPW to attach to a hydrant, and uh, they, they have not yet responded. Okay. So they just did their, they requested it and they're, they're sort of chasing that down with uh, with DPW. Okay. We, we've had, we, we've had the, uh, the, meet, the meter on the, on the hydrant previously. Yeah. Uh, last year right. for, for water service. And, and you know, the, the, the problem with, with, with that area, and, and, and we know it, is that, you know, there's, there's hydrants on, on the building to set up sprinkle that is just not enough pressure. Got it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, they, they have water, they have water to use for isolated things, but not, not what they really want to set up for. Okay. And the bigger plants, though, the, the shrubs and bushes and things like that, is, is the landscaper watering those? Uh, I, I believe he is. Okay. Um, he runs, I mean, essentially he runs the risk of, if, if it dies, he has to replace it. So it's, it's only to his benefit to uh, keep those things alive. Okay. All right. And then um, the two chain link posts out front, there was an observation of those. You said those are going to be removed, right? Just work, work that's not done yet. It's, yeah. it's on the punch list. Okay, cool. Uh, why, you know, why, why they left it there? I don't know. Yeah. If I knew those answers, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be in a different business. 
And then to the rear, the, where the fence picks up kind of in the back of the property, there was the question why the fence was not removed when the new fence was put up. Yeah, there was, there, there was a, a, a portion that, we, that was overlapped, um, I believe more for security. Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't researched that answer yet. Okay. Some of these questions just came in recently. Did it, yeah. Um, I don't have an answer for all of them right now. Okay. But it, it's installed for, for the design. I mean, we're, we were not putting the new fence all the way down to the, uh, the corner of the property. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It was overlap for security. I get that. Uh, in the pavement, we talked about the island, so the island's going to get reworked and cleaned up. Yep. yep. There were some concerns about scuffs in the new asphalt from a dumpster, from dumpsters and construction. Is that stuff get touched up or no? I have, I have my own, I have my own photos of those. Also, they they did not put plank down under the on the dumpster wheels. Okay. So that's you know again. Why, why would they do that? I have no idea. Hey. Pretty, pretty standard. And then just an observation about water runoff running down the driveway, but that's, that's um, you know, an operational thing they'll have to, in the winter, just like anything sanded or salted or whatever, you know? It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. That, that's a good thing. Got it. Um... All right, and then the site, the electrical work, you have, you know, for the site, the, out, the exterior lighting, which I know you're still working on it, so we, we won't get into specifics on these, these questions, but the gist of the questions is, do we get the lights fixtures that were on the drawings? Um, are the as builds completed yet? You know, so you're still digging. This is still a work in progress anyways, right, to, to get, all, get through all that? Well, I, I can tell you the as-built are not complete yet. They're, they're, they're the, all the contractors, uh, subcontractors, and uh gc are working on their as built now okay we did uh, the site the site as built was sent to the planning department as a as a progress set um with all the uh all the all the underground utilities in it but they, they they've just been finishing up some of the surface stuff which uh, and, and the grading <coughs> which has to be added to it so and and, and we've been in touch with karen knows that okay all right, and then you're still working out the, the actual lamp heads to figure out what fixtures they are, what was specked out, what we got, and all that good stuff, right? Yeah, I know. It is, yeah, there's some questions that came in that I just haven't had a chance yep. to, to look at fully to okay. give someone an answer. Right. <clears throat> okay, and then there were some, some real late questions that came in real late this afternoon that we'll, we'll, we'll review next meeting after we get a good, a good read on them. Um, some of the questions are I need to get some questions back to the sim whoever submitted them because they're just need some clarity okay um, what else anything else for questions no anybody from the board have any uh, anybody ask them questions or anything they need to add in the questions no uh, I have done All right. All right, moving right on. The next item on the agenda is uh, some discussion on these four change order requisitions for um, for DGI communications from uh, from Mike Michello here. Were, were you going to review uh -huh. this, uh, Linda or Steve? Or? Yeah. Okay. I can talk a little about them. Hold on. Um, in the absence of Mike, so the. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I'm just trying to distinguish uh, if there's numbers on these and um, the quotes here so we can just know. Yeah, it's CO4, CO1. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yep. CO, yep. One starts with the dinky link. Yep. So Two good. is just the Ethernet and coax. Okay. Three is the Ethernet and coax. Okay. So let's start with CO1-E. Well, I mean, I can talk about them sort of as a whole, but the, um, the issue became that we needed some increased functionality and flexibility for, for at least the multi-purpose room and then maybe the program rooms, and then of course we have a television in the game activity room. 
So it just seemed that we should be consistent with what we needed to do to increase the functionality for all of the units um, while, we were, while we were at it. So um, the units themselves, the display units, are not smart TVs in effect, so they needed the added equipment to allow the projection or display in the room to access the wireless network and stream from mobile devices um, and computers. So um, all four rooms are receiving the Apple TV units for mirroring mobile devices to the presentation screens. You know, we needed to display, let's say, YouTube videos or even movie streams from Netflix or um, live shows from an iPad or an iPhone. So there needed to be a bit more done for that. So the Apple TV devices are... Let's just, Linda, let's just stick to this. Installed. Linda, can we just stick to the change order 1E? It's going to get confusing okay. if we start jumping around here. One, I'm sorry. Well, I was just giving you a little background. Okay, yep. Nobody wants it. I will move on. No, well, um, yeah. We can get the background in each one of these as we go through them. That, that's fine. Okay, pardon me. You find it again? Uh, okay. So... All right, one. Oh, good heavens. Linda, one E is the dinky is link. Uh, no, I, yeah, I just, it's, it's a new computer and it's really just not working for picking up the attachments. Okay, um, the dinky link. That allows for remote control access with the units that are installed in the closet in the multi-purpose room so that somebody can walk around the room and, you know, point their remote at the touch panel or what's um, connected to the touch panel in the closet. So that's what that item is for. The coax cable and uh, HDMI cable will required, oh, sorry, did I just jump? No, the HDMI cable, I'm sure, is no. for, the, for the device, yeah. And the oh, MR... Yeah, I again, I have all these icons on my computer. So the multi-purpose room. <laughs> <coughs> so, Steve, how is this fit... How, I, guess, I guess just a big question. Is there a budget for all these? Are these within the bu AV budget and uh, with the ff &E budget or whatever we had in the... Yes, yes. I mean, if you look at them there... They're not. They're not tremendous. No, uh, they're relatively they're small dollars. Five thousand uh, all told okay. for them. All right. So it, it it can fit in the budget. Yes. Okay. All right. So so this is from the multi-purpose room. It's for this uh, the dinky link, so they can uh, use the audio visual mm -hmm. throughout the room. The amount is one thousand forty-nine dollars and fifty-seven cents. Um, so is there any direct questions on this change order from from anyone on the board? No, all right. No. All right. I'd like to make a motion to approve change order one E to DGI Communications for the multi-room, uh, multi-purpose room um, function AV functionality in the amount of one thousand forty-nine dollars and fifty-seven cents. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, second and from Larry. Uh, if we do a quick roll call, Alicia, on the, the senior center. Uh, Linda? Yes. John Miller? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Carl? Yes. Joe? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Larry? Yes. All right, all are in favor, so that motion passes, great. All right, change order CO2-E from DGI Communications. Yeah, this is just for the Ethernet um, COM4 steps for connecting to the wireless network and... Uh, 
So there's some patch cables, yeah. That's it's pretty, that's pretty standards. Okay. All right. Any wall plate. Yeah. Um, any questions on these? No. All right. I'd like to make a promotion approved change order two E to DGI Communications uh, for added um, Ethernet capacity and COM ports in the multi-purpose room in the amount of eight hundred twenty-four dollars and eighty cents. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Stephanie. If we do a roll call for the um, senior center. Yep. Larry. Yes. Joe? Yes. Carl? Yes. Steven? Yes. John? Yes. Linda? Yes. Kathy? Yes. All right, so the vote is unanimous and motion passes. Great. All right. Change order number 3E for DJI Communications. Uh, well, this has the Apple TV unit um, for the multi-purpose rooms and another Dinky Link extended range kit. Okay, and then just the cabling to support support that stuff. Got it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Makes sense, you know. They have a little more functionality and a you know smart smart box there to be able to use the room a little better. The amount of the change order is one thousand three hundred three dollars and seventy two cents. Does anybody have any questions directly on this this change order? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve change order number three E. To DGI Communications uh, for Apple TVs, Dinky Links, and associated cabling for multipurpose room 101 and 103 in the amount of $1,303.72. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Carl Campagna. Do a roll call, Alicia, on the Senior Center. Linda? Yes. John? Yes. Even? Yes. Joe? Yes. Riley? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Paul? Yes. All right, all in favor, so the motion uh, motion passes. Uh, great. All right, we got one more here. So. One more. Yep, change out number number four, E to DGI Communications. If you can run through this one. It's just all the exact same items for each of the other rooms. So the activity room is the game room in each of the program rooms that have the displays. Okay. So yeah, it's just Apple TVs and associated cabling, it looks like, for, for three rooms. Uh, the amount is $1,528.96. Um, any questions or, or comments directly on this, this change order? No? All right. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve change order number 4E to DGI Communications for Apple TVs and associated cabling for the second floor activity room 201, second floor program room 1-295, and lastly, second floor program room 2-210 in the amount of $1,528.96. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Joe and Nice. We do a roll call, Alicia, on these. Linda? Yes. Steven? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Carl? Yes. Larry? Yes. Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Joe? Yes. All right, the vote's are unanimous, so the motion uh, passes. Great. Good. Thank you, Linda. That's uh, that's good. That'll help. That'll be a. Uh, yeah. Thank you. you. Guys, will be all connected now, and uh, it'll be good.
Uh, all right. So Linda, I know you wanted to talk about the kitchen, the kitchen quotes. So, so I did receive it. It looks, it looks like yeah. everything's here, and you know, it looks, it looks comparable to what I would expect to be in a kitchen. But as, as noted, it's, it's. Um, I think you had the total on here it was a little under twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, nineteen thousand. It's been a process, I guess, that yeah. I didn't anticipate. You know, some of the additional larger appliances. Sure. Yeah. So, so I. I had delayed and just trying to work on how we could do certain things and what we really needed and I was getting some guidance for that. Yep. So then I also didn't expect maybe to use this distributor for all of those items, but in the end, since she could get them, it seems the most expeditious way to do it. I just neglected to realize that, you know, we were going over the ten thousand at that point. Yeah. Um, I so think you're on the right the right path I though. I mean it, it, it's good that you have, have the list here, and it's pretty comprehensive. I mean, I, I, w I would just source it at three vendors and get the get the quotes and. Right. Well, I could do that. I could do that. I could also eliminate the larger items that I could also go ahead and outsource myself and just buy them elsewhere and not go through the distributor. So I can talk to you or Nancy after this um, and see what the best approach is to. Okay. Getting the order in. All right, but at the end of the day, I think you're on the right the right path, and it looks like you get the get the right stuff here. So, so um, thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll expect some some next meet, I guess, to vote on. Is that that sound okay? Yeah, we will do that. All right. Uh, let's go on that. All right, I guess we're right into uh, to Steve. You got some. Uh, Payments and purchase orders and stuff. I'm sorry, Steve. Did you, did you say me? <coughs> yeah, sorry. I was just kind of turned and mumbling here. Um, you got you got the one requisition for payment you wanted to discuss, right? And then is there? And then we have a vertex invoice, I believe. I got, right? I got one. Yeah, one invoice, and then and then, then the application for payment and the contract for that. Um, I, I wanna I wanna discuss the. A, a scenario um, and, and get the to get the CBC's uh, uh, feelings sorted. But uh, the, the the contractor and I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to simplify his his accounting on on the retainage uh, reduction. Um, so what what he did is he decided that um, he was going to bill everything a hundred percent and then reduce retainage. Two and a half percent, and then the, the remaining retainage would be what was left uh, on the contract to finish out items. Um, it, it, it works out great from from a paperwork viewpoint because it makes all that you just run the numbers. You know, uh, the uh, uh, remaining numbers to zero and the retainage to two and a half. But um, as I I've explained to them a couple times it didn't necessarily work for me because the work's not done, right? Um, there's, there's items that are incomplete that where we would be certifying are complete, which is is problematic, especially when you're dealing with um, file subbidders because then they can say, well, if you owe me a hundred percent because you you certified that I'm done, and we have some issues with certain subs. Like the tile guy and Einstein. Yeah, they're not coming um, back. <laughs> the, the, you know, the, 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 the risk is there that they don't do the work. Yeah. Because because of the documentation. Um, so I I, I, I I revised it and actually a couple times and to, you know to try and, and get this along and uh, for whatever reason they they started to say things like well we submitted it to you and we didn't uh, return. Uh, comments in, in a timely fashion, so you need to now uh, approve this. And I said, well, no, because you have no. uh, number one, you, you never sent in a pencil rec, you just sent in a full rec, uh, signed as of the 31st, but I didn't even get it till the, the April 6th. And you have um, inaccurate information on it. So yeah, I was hoping that they would uh, make the changes and, and send this along for the meeting today, but they did not. So. 
The only thing that, that I was, and, and you know, it's entirely up, up, up to you guys, but um, I didn't know whether we there could be some, I mean, maybe not a, a vote per se, but, but a, some kind of a, um, a consensus that uh, we could process a payment and not to exceed the amount that's on this requisition because it's, it's definitely going to be less uh, once uh, I work through this with, with whoever I ain't going to have to end up talking to because two guys that talked to just didn't do anything. Okay. Otherwise, we wait until the next uh, the next PVT meeting. Hi, this is Joey. Can I chime in? Yeah, Joe, go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, Steve, I, I, quite frankly, I think it's a bad idea to yeah. approve 100% payment for work that's not done. Um, in general, which is, I think, what you were trying to say. I no, think even this, pay, you even know, this. For the work that is done, and not, not, you know, play these games about two and a half percent. Because if you agree that the guy, the sub is done, then you can't go back to him and tell him to finish the work. You can say you already proved it. So no, no, that, 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 those, those are my comments. That that to Delphi, Joe. So that that. That's why yeah. I, didn't, I didn't. I'm not presenting this yeah. just to approve as is. Um, you know, I, I I don't have a problem with with releasing retainers. I mean, you got foundation guys that you know they haven't been here since uh, you know April of last year. Uh, but yeah. you know, I wasn't sure. I wasn't I wasn't going to release retainers on anything that wasn't 100 percent complete for the for the requisition. So yeah. Um, yeah. So, for instance, Steve, uh, that, I would just happen to look at this today uh, that Steve sent over late today, I, I believe, and I just look at the electrician some way. Some reason I always gravitate to that first, but, you know, <laughs> if you look at that, he's billing you for 100% for the BDA, according to, you know, and, and, I, and you know he didn't do that. I know. I'm, yeah, I don't even know if I'm comfortable doing it or not to exceed. Just this whole paper, everything, right. the whole thing's wrong. I know they want to get paid yeah, yeah. And, and they 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 definitely are owed money but not a hundred percent you know they can't just put everything's done a hundred percent because it's it's not well, they, I mean if you look at it they were leaving 300 it, it ended up being three almost three hundred ten thousand dollars in retainage which yeah, that, that could very well be enough to, you know, to finish the work. You know, to monetize the punch list. But the problem is, is, is who you who you apply that to. That's what I'm saying. The cor the corresponding sheets and the paperwork after it has just everything is 100 percent, which it's not. You know, so I don't right. I don't know how right. we could even vote right. on Hold this. Oh, it's not. Um, you know, I did I didn't send you what my comments were back then. I don't know. Maybe I did, but. Um, you know, I marked it up line by line. Yeah, I saw your comments. You were very thorough. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, I'd say, you know, I know we owe money, and I mean, see what you can do next week. If we need to pull get together a quick, a quick meeting to to get something through, we can do it. You know. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that's better than doing. I, I guess I was thinking a little outside the box, but not not, not to exceed. But we we still need to have a a vote on it. So I might as well just. Um, I'm just not uh, comfortable just doing anything. I think board, I think the board's uh, kind of there too with with even just the notes on the supporting document saying everything's 100 percent completed. And right, they're holding retain retainage, but to what line items, you know? <laughs> Right, right. So as Joe noted, you know, the electrician can come back and just say, oh, you sent that, that document out, it's a public document, I'm 100% done. <laughs> exactly. And, and, he's, and he's one of the ones I'm worried about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this does when you, when, you when you anticipate a monetized punch list, I think that's important because, you, yeah, that, you know, that's sort of coming into play here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well here's the thing. Right. The, pro the process is that... that that they, they, they submit, they tell us when, when uh, they're, they're ready for punches and they submit a punch list to us, which is always much shorter than what, what it ends up being. Then mm -hmm. between Vertex and VHA, we went around and we, we generated 
the parts and we did the interior, then the exterior, and then uh, uh, Rachel had her stuff consultants come in and, and do this. So there's, there's a number of different punches out there, but the interior punch has 500 items on it. So it wasn't, it wasn't a 10 minute walk through the building. Yeah. So we issued that punch list to them. They started working on it, and then they sent it, they sent uh, an up, update, uh, you know, where, where they were at uh, to us. It wasn't 100%, but in, this is where we're at. So I, in Rachel and I started doing the back punch this, this past week. Once you've, we've done the first round, that's when, that's when the monetize, then, then you monetize the punch list. Yeah. So we're in the process of getting to the point where we're going to monetize it. You don't monetize the initial punch list. No, nah, be, that'd be overwhelming, right? The back punch? Yeah, you can do it, yeah. So, okay. So, to answer your question, we're in the process of doing that, and they, you know, and they keep saying, well, you have an issue with the monetized punches, and they're, just, they're, they're being a, a little difficult um, for whatever reason. All right, well, let's see. Trust me, things, things are, actually, I've been able to check things off the punch list as being done, uh, but then again, they've, they've got some things that's being complete that are not. So it, it's, you know, it's a typical, uh, a typical uh, punch list on a job in a full zone. Okay. All right, let's see where you get with it this week with them, and then, and then we'll touch base, and, and if uh, Come back. we can clear things up, we can, that's fine. We can get something together to... Uh, have a little powwow on it. All right, good. Okay, and then the only other one I have is, is actually the bird test um, invoice from March, invoice uh, 0145366 for uh, a total $24,687.50. Uh, it's and this month, it's it all all bird test uh, costs. We did not have um, uh, the testing agency of Fitzmyer and Tachi in this month. They will be coming back. Um, Fitzmyer and Tachi, uh, not the testing company there, but uh, Fitzmyer and Tachi was doing the HVAC commissioning. They still have um, to, to finish up. They're waiting on the ER and they're doing their uh, their final report. But, uh, it, but but our bills will, will be going down over the next few months because um, I, I, I sent Dan to, to another job because it just did not make sense in the budget for him to be there when I was just like landscaping were going on. Yeah, that's um, right. You know, it, it, it's too big a draw per day for, for that and we can, we can see the results of, of landscaping once it's in. And we can see the results of punch list once we go back to do the do the punch. So um, so his his time uh, is, is going to be off of this. I mean, he may come back here and there uh, for for something that's necessary, but he's he's not there on a um, on a daily basis as of uh, I think it was the thirty first of March. So essentially, essentially this month. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty consistent from your other bill, and that, that's a smart move. I, I think that's um, that's appreciated. Any questions or comments from the... trying to preserve the budget a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Any questions or comments from the board on this, this invoice? Not I. No. No. <laughs> All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve invoice number 145366 to Vertex Engineering for services rendered from February 28th to March 27th in the amount of $24,657.50. Sorry, I'm killing it here. Let me, uh. Six, 687. 687. Oh, there it is, and then, yeah, okay. So, just a correction, Alicia. So it's $24,687.50. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I think that was Joe. So Joe was the second. Joe Nice. If we could do a roll call on the um, library project, that'd be great. Yep. Senior center. Senior center. Senior center. Senior center. Thank you. All over the place. Sorry. <laughs> 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 it's okay, Steve. Um, we got you back. <laughs> yes. 
Um, uh, Joe? Yes. Larry? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Linda? Yes. John? Yes. Stephen? Yes. All right, so the voters are unanimous, so the motion, uh, motion passes. All right, so that's, that's all you had, right, Steve? Yes, Steve, that, that, that's all I have tonight. Thank you very much. All right, I just have some uh, housekeeping to do on this project. Um, just some invoices. So I just, this, there was a question from the town. Just to be clear, these, these bills, are, these purchase orders that we usually just sign and, and review as a board when we're here in, in presence, we've just been going over them because we're remote. And um, it's more just, just certifying that the work we've already approved is being done. Because um, I was getting questions on how come, you know, we're, we're approving all this money that, you know, but it's money that's in the budget that we've previously approved. It's just certifying the work has been completed. Um, every, I mean, everyone's clear on that, right? Everyone, I guess, understands that? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, so uh, first one's here. I got uh, a purchase order completion uh, for DGI con Communications. Purchase order number 2108408. Um, this was, you know, DGI construction for, for general services and some of the work that we had approved previously. It was uh, basically just the IT build out for, for a number of rooms. Um, this was the, the bigger one, so it was most of the wiring and cabling and things like that for, for the rooms. The amount of the invoice was uh, $96,254.14. Did anyone have any questions or comments on this, this invoice? No. All right, I'd like to make a motion to no. approve. Uh, Purchase order number, invoice number 2108408 to DJI Communications. <coughs> uh, for general uh, IT communications installation through the facilities and the amount of $96,254.14. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Carl Campagna. If we do a quick roll call, that'd be great. Joe? Yes. Larry? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Linda? Yes. John? Yes. Steven? Yes. Carl? Yes. All right, so the vote is unanimous, so the invoice gets paid. Good. Uh, all right, second invoice here is, uh, again, for, uh, sorry, for Gov Connections, this is basically for the computers for the site. Um, again, we went over it before. This is just a confirmation. Linda, Linda, the computers are there. Everybody's, everybody's happy with them? Are they being installed now? Uh, no, but yes, they're wonderful. But Mike, yeah, he has them all anyways. And Office he, staff yeah. and um, some volunteer places. All right. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, purchase order for invoice for uh, number 2105184 for the computers, docking stations, and monitors for the facilities and the amount of 12000 Eight hundred fifty-seven dollars and eighty cents. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Joe and East. We do a roll call for the senior center. Karen. Yes. Larry. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Linda. Yes. John. Yes. Stephen? Yes. Joe? Yes. All right, the vote is unanimous, so that is approved. Okay, a couple more, three more. All right, <clears throat> so we have one here for the police detail they needed to uh, install the fiber out in the street. 
uh, was part of the whole package that uh, Mike Martello put together. Any uh, pretty cut and dry, any questions or comments on that? No? All right. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the invoice for purchase order number 2108478 uh, for police detail for the installation of the fiber to the facilities in the amount of $412.88. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Larry Gamet. If you do a roll call. Yes. Joe? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Linda? Yes. John? Yes. Eden? Yes. Larry? Larry, you there? Yes. All right, so uh, the voters are unanimous, so the, the motion passes. Great. All right, a couple more. So this one's uh, for visual, visual Edge. Again, part of the IT package Mike Michello put together. This is for uh, one of the desktop printer, scanner, copier units for the facilities. You know, this one's uh, up and running, Linda, not installed and everything. Sorry. This is uh, for the Savin desktop printer, scanner, copier in the facilities. Oh, yeah. that okay, one's we have a color printer, a standalone for the staff in one area, and a smaller one for the outreach office. Okay, good. So they're both there, and, and they're both. And Don has one as well, Don Knapp and Veteran Services. Okay, great. All right. I'd like to make a mo motion to approve invoice. Uh, the invoice for purchase order number 2105185 for the uh, smaller 7 desktop printer, scanner, copier in the amount of $1,130. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Carl Compagna. You do a roll call. Joe? No. Yes. Larry? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Yes. Linda? Yes. John? Yes. Eden? Yes. Carl? Yes. All right, the vote is unanimous and the motion passes. All right, last one here for, uh, so this is for the larger printer, um, scanner, copier, multifunction unit oh. from uh, okay. Kenmark Office Systems. Um, so this was uh, the $6,764.23 unit. So I mean, this is the larger one that's downstairs, Linda? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's there, it's up and running, yeah. functioning? Yes, it is. Good, all Perfectly. right. Any questions, comments on the board? No? No. No. All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve the invoice for purchase order number 2105186 for seven multifunction printer uh, to Kenmark Office Services in the amount of $6,764.23. Is there a second? Second. Second by Joe and Nice. Do a quick roll call. Uh -huh. Yes. Larry? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Linda? Yes. John? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Yes. All right, the vote is unanimous and the motion passes. Good. And I think that that, that brings us to the end of the um, agenda for the senior center unless anybody has anything hanging out there and anything to discuss or chat about well, i do have a question and it's sure. just regarding um whether you know i did want to maybe unilaterally make a decision about locating or placing this um <clears throat> this herb garden project by an eagle scout at the high school so He's, I, I have certainly agreed to it. It's a very nice idea and a nice project, and we would use it for the kitchen for preparing meals. Or so, 
you know, the issue is having enough sun and yeah. in the back, actually on the green, there's a little bit of a question as to how much sun it, it would get for, you know, most of the day. So he kind of scouted out a spot right at the beginning of the building, right basically next to the generator between that and the kitchen door. And I felt like that might be a bit too prominent. So, um, so I've been scouting out a few other locations and I just don't know, again, how much yeah. freedom, a brand new shiny building, you know, whether you really want to put a structure just anywhere or we want to try to hide it in the back and find a place that might have some sun. Maybe it's not as ideal. Um, are there any but, sort of limitations this is, this is to what I can interrupt? Can, yeah? is, is that thing movable? Um, I, I guess technically it would be. It will probably be really heavy once it's filled and used. Yeah. But yeah, there'll be feet on on the legs. But it but won't yeah, be. So like, uh, if, if we put it someplace that we decided we didn't like it, we could move right. it. It's not like it's. We, we should be able to move it. That is true. Okay. So does that. Does He's it making need this proposal. Funding, right? He's got to have um, approval from his, you know, his um, council, so to speak, for the yep. Eagle Scouts. Yep. Do you need any funding from the board or any anything from the project? No, I don't. No, need, nope, I don't need any funding. I just thought, in terms of you know your oversight of a new building, that you just, if there's any comments or suggestions, I would I would be happy to hear them. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I more of, more of kind of a operational I, thing, and then maybe the council and the agent can decide that. But yeah, we can weigh on uh, it. Right? As far as the portability of it, would it be possible possible? to put casters on it so it could be rolled around. You know, that's a good question, Carl. I could ask him about that. Why not? Yeah. I mean, this is JD. I just sort of glanced at some of those images. It looks very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I, I guess I'm sort of thinking if, 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 the, if there's sun that's appropriate, yeah. put it more in the, the green the green common area, the campus area, as opposed to yeah, uh, off, of the, of, the off of the parking lot or off of the entrance to the building. So yeah, uh, this yeah. might be a selection there, but um, the handicapped accessibility is something he needs to check off that has to exist for the project, so um, that's okay. a little bit tougher. And then my question, yeah. I guess one of the other reasons I decided to bring it up here was because as we looked at a couple of locations that were nearer to the stone wall on First Parish Road, I thought, oh, I might not be able to do that, have anything sort of in that vicinity without going to the planning board. So mm, um, right. I don't know if that's the case, and if that would be the case. But. So that's yeah, why I, I, I... It's something you, I, would, I would definitely run by them, for sure. Okay. But yeah, I or think if it's portable. Also, then you have the option of being able to put it a lot of different places. Yeah, right. but if, that, if it has to be accessible, it, it limits. Lynn and I looked at this uh, yesterday. The accessibility limits some of the places where you yeah you could put it. Yeah, um, you know, if, if somebody walking, you know, someone walking across the lawn, not such a big deal. But if, if yeah, well, the lawn is an, is an accessible surface, yeah. so. Yeah. And we didn't want to encourage that, really. Right. Not right now, no. <laughs> no, not right now. Either. Yeah, I think oh, it's I a think, nice... You know, a couple of those images are reasonable spots, and I think maybe I will start in the back, and if it doesn't serve our purposes and he wants it in the front, you know, maybe a year's gone by then, and it won't be such a big deal. So we could try that. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. And then lastly, how do you all feel about um, either, you know, just supporting or attending um, a ribbon cutting type ceremony on the morning of May 14th? It's a Friday, 10 a.m. I don't know if CBC um, normally sort of sponsors these things or, you know, I have some help to do. I've already run it by the town administrator and the select board members. Um, so they are okay with that date how everybody else here feels. What was the date again, Linda? I'm sorry. Friday, May 14th. I guess I feel or felt, you know, as we're starting to slowly open and starting to invite people into the building that we should have a little bit of a more formal opening ceremony at least, even if it's a bit controlled or limited. 
and um, you know, and, and start the celebration. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Before too much time goes by. We never got a ground breaking, so. I know. Right. But we have an invitation. <laughs> Because Stephanie had actually done the groundbreaking invitation, so we'll just rework that and then we can use it for <laughs> sending out to all the dignitaries. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, Stephanie, do you want to help out again and then see if we can support a little bit? Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Happy to. All right. Very good. Thanks. Okay, that's it for me. All right. Good. All right. So that'll uh, wrap up the Senior Center project tonight. Thanks, everyone, for that. All right. So we'll get right into the next one here. John, uh, John, you still on the phone? Miller? Yes. John Blagna. Wait, you're looking for uh, Yes, I am. <laughs> no, I'm All right. I'm here. I was uh, just on my phone on mute. Got it. So switching gears here, yeah. So let's uh, we can roll right into the fire station. Uh, you know, if you give us a little update, John. And I know uh, Chief had sent us over uh, a kind of a photo document. I don't know if you have that, and if you were going to run through it, or you want us no, to. No, no. Chief sent me the pictures. I made the photo document. Got it. Chief sent Nancy the pictures, and she. So we can we can put it up, and I, I can speak to it tonight. And um, yeah, moving forward, I, I, I know you've been hanging on the phone here, John, but yeah, it'd be good if we could just do a, you know, we, we like to get a little photo update monthly just to kind of run through it and see where, where things are at with the, with the progress. And it was really helpful through the COVID kind of thing because it was, you know, our, our physical presence at the site was, was more difficult to do, but um, I can send you an email with more detail on it. But yeah, I mean, why don't you... Yeah, uh, I did actually get a copy. Oh, good, okay. I can copy those photos. So if you if you want to scroll through them, I'm, I'm just on the phone now. I do have the uh, photos on my screen here. Okay, do you want to start with that photo log and then and then give us a little update after that? All right, we can do that. That's cool. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. So, uh, All right, hold on. Let, let Nancy, uh, okay. let, let's, let us bring them up here. All right. Go ahead. All right, so we're on, we're on photo one here. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, a, a sort of uh, existing conditions, um, and it, it is where they do have the uh, erosion control. You can see a little bit of that green uh, netting uh, around the perimeter there. Uh, the, next, the next image is, you know, the garage door open and the fire truck in its uh, position there. Um, the next picture is the construction set was, input, was uh, installed along with all the... Uh, the flotation barrier uh, that was surrounding the entire perimeter of the project. Uh, the next photo, the chief uh, had uh, took the opportunity to uh, have some, some uh, drills for the staff to cut into the roof. So uh, the contract was able to work that into a schedule. So we had some of the, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the fire firemen get up in there and cut the roof and. Do some, do some training to the That's opportunity to take advantage of that yeah. before the demolition started. This was after the abatement was uh, completed uh, and the building was just before getting ready for demolition. And then the next, uh, the next image is the demolition. It didn't really take too much to take that building down. It was uh, not that big of a building to start with. Uh, and then the, the last image is, uh, well, second to last image is the uh, a continuation of the demolition. I believe everything is all down by now. Um, that's good. So that was abated, and then they see you using the you know sprinklers to keep the dust down. So it's, it's pretty standard. That's correct. Yes. Yep. That, that, that's correct. Yeah, the abatement was uh, was, was completed. Uh, was was tested first. Uh, had a hygienist. Uh, the vertex sent a hygienist out there, and it was all coordinated. Uh, Properly uh, baited, uh, the report was set up the building department, you know, for their sign off on it, and uh, the prior to the issues of the building department. And then once all that paperwork is over, we got all the uh, disconnect uh, permits from the utilities. So uh, once all that was in order, the building permit was issued, uh, along with the demolition, and then the demolition work uh, was underway. You know, was, was completed in pretty short order. Um, and the last photograph, that's the temporary enclosure for the, uh, for the, for the apparatus. Fancy. So, um, 
Yeah, so I'm moving right along. Um, so as far as the you know, construction's underway, obviously permits are in place. All the paperwork's finally been squared away on that part of it. Staff's been relocated. Um, the utilities cut off, as I said before. Um, so the uh, contractor is uh, you know, cleaning things up. Uh, they'll be looking at starting the demolition. Uh, I'm sorry, the excavation next week. Uh, his samples were obtained from um, uh, for, for brick, for fill material, for compaction testing, and so forth. Uh, so that's uh, in the process. That uh, you know, obviously the contract with Briggs was finally uh, executed. All that paperwork was all squared away. Uh, we're um, you know receiving submittals, processing submittal, shop drawings, and so forth. So a lot of a lot of front work, front end work, behind the scenes work uh, underway, uh, processing of uh, those those uh, requests for information as well as the shop drawing submittals. The North Snow process. Uh, contractors giving us a three week look ahead. Um, yeah, obviously the next uh, step is to start the excavation once they get the rest of the site cleared. Uh, starting next week, they're anticipating end of next week, uh, possibly the first of the next week to actually start uh, start with the foundation's work. Uh, so that's a real quick snapshot. During the uh, during the excavation process, uh, it was uncovered there was a little bit of a conflict with the location of the one of the fest pools, which is uh, going to be actually in the vicinity of of the excavation. So. Uh, that, uh, that the pretty much got resolved. Uh, the Ross Engineering was out to uh, look at that. That was, uh, you know, essentially was one of the older, the older test pools uh, that was no longer functioning. So uh, essentially they're going to abandon that that uh, test pool and then uh, just redirect the flow to the overflow that's currently there in place. Uh, so that should should hold things over. Uh, at least uh, you know in the near future. Eventually, the, the, the septic system and that that might have to be uh, upgraded. Uh, that's something that I think everybody knew about. It's just not part of this project at, at this point. So, okay. um, kind of holding it all together there for that uh, that installation at least. Yeah, so you know earlier so the, the, in the week on the cesspool. So just to be clear, so it, it was an old cesspool and it was just just kind of found through discovery of the property and then and then it's it's basically just going to be abandoned so there's no no real impact that's of the that's project. Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, again those you know, kind of back in the old days, uh, some of us uh, are old enough to remember, you know, when cesspools were, were kind of the only way to do things. Uh, there was the old beehive and uh, you know eventually they'd get clogged up yeah. and uh, you know you just come you dig another hole and, and run another pipe and you know, they just would, would you know flow from one to the next. Um, so this was one of the earlier uh, pools, cesspools that was on, on the site. It wasn't really functioning anymore, actually just as an overflow or a pass-through, if you will. Um, so that, uh, like I said, Greg Tandy from Ross was out there and looked at it, uh, pretty much con concurred that it was no longer functioning. So uh, we're just, we're just going to abandon it, uh, remove it, and uh, relocate the piping directly to the, to the secondary cesspool. Okay. That's good. That's good that um, worked out. Worked out in that manner, right? And we, we will uh, just uh, run this by board of health so that they are aware as well. Um, they they did sign off on this. They their logic was as long as there was no change in the flow uh, from the building, it's essentially still a two bedroom uh, you know facility. So right. there's really no no change. So they they accepted the uh, continuation of that of that system. You know as as uh, as it is right now, you know, obviously it, it will eventually will need to be replaced, but we're, uh, we're putting that off to another day for when the funds become available uh, or at such a time when that system no longer works. Okay. And we've settled on a vendor for the building, right? The, um, the local vendor? I forget their name. Uh, yes, it's, uh, oh my goodness, it's a uh, uh, structure something or other. Okay. Uh, you talk about for the, uh, for the fabricator of the, of the apparatus building. Exactly, yeah. Yep, yeah, there was, um, I guess you call them local, they're out of Fairhaven. Right, right. Yeah, but they're not up in Maine, at least, or, you know. Right, exactly, yeah, so, um, uh, Morton had had a local representative uh, that, uh, I think we talked about the last time, um, you know, the, the, the price was, uh, was high on that bid, so uh, Power Construction went with uh, another vendor, Martin. Yeah, and they and, backed uh, up. They were out of New York State, and then they, they essentially just bailed out at the end after they gave a, a proposal and everything else. Uh, you know, we were all happy with the, uh, 
the, the, the product was listed in the documents as an acceptable alternate, uh, but they bailed out at the end, so uh, our construction was uh, scrambling to try and find a, a suitable substitute, and they came upon this other company, as I said, in the turn that was a local local outfit, um, and that's, you know, out in Fairhaven, so it was, was going to have a, you know, Massachusetts-based company. Okay. Uh so once submittals are submitted and things are gonna run through, what's what's the lead time in a building like that? Um, well, it's, it's mostly pre prefabricated trusses. They're doing uh, wall panels and things like that. So uh, yeah, they're they're, uh, they're they're in process right now. We just actually released the uh, new trust shop drawings. Uh, we just got the roof. Uh, sorry, the wall panel package just came in. So. Uh, they're up there. They'll be in fabrication once they get all the, the releases. We've been processing all the shop drawings pretty quickly. Uh, you know, the, the team has been very uh, responsive and processing shop drawings so as to not uh, create any delays. So I, I think it's going to come together pretty nicely. The contractor is, uh, seems to be pretty on the ball in terms of staying on top of schedule uh, and getting uh, getting all the uh, ducks in a row, so to speak, for the for the project. Uh, you know, obviously they're going to do all the groundwork at the uh, foundations in. You know, get all that uh, uh, infrastructure in place, and uh, you know, once he gets everything all in, backfilled, compacted, I think they'll be ready, uh, ready to go with the rest of the the wall panels and the and the, and the truss systems. Okay. And the, does the building come all pre-wired and pre-plumbed, or is that something that, that's done in the field? No, no, that's all done in the field. field. Yeah, we we had looked at that. That was kind of more of a modular. Yeah, exactly. Kind of yeah. Building. I think that was what. Yeah, that's what we had. In the, I had talked about doing on the uh, living quarters building in the pen, the pen, and the, and the uh, that's right. I remember after you essentially you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, essentially building in a box, you know, and you yep. get a uh, plug and play kind of a thing. Okay, um, so schedule, you're, you're pretty comfortable. Schedule, you thinking, think we're good there? Yeah, yeah. I, I get a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty pleased with the responsiveness of the contractor. Um, very good with the uh, with, with, with the uh, submittals. Uh, we have very productive meetings. We meet once a, once a week, virtually. Um, this type of business pretty quickly. Uh, a lot of people you know, going back and forth. Again, a lot of it, as I said, was on the submittal process, answering questions, uh, clarifications. There's always questions that come up. So, uh, been able to process things pretty quickly. And um, you know, I think it's going so far so good. Yeah, knock out wood. Let's yeah. just, uh, you know, kind of keep the same momentum going forward. All right, <coughs> Joe, you have anything to add? No, I think John did everything today. Uh, they're doing really well. I'm impressed with tower construction myself. Um, you know, I think the job's going to be uh, goes really smoothly. If that's, they only found that one problem successful, and you know, that's that's an easy fix. And um, you know, there shouldn't be no, there shouldn't be any obstacles. I think uh, they're going to do just fine. I have a lot of confidence in them. At least was just the way I feel, anyway. Yeah, it's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. We, I drove by there. Uh, I think last weekend just to check it out. Yeah, look, the site looked good. Yeah, I saw you had the whole, uh, you know, flagpole all caution taped off. It looked like everything was set up, set up nice. So, good stuff. Any uh, questions or comments from the board on the on the on the project? No, no, no. I have none. Nope, none here. Good. All right, so no change orders for the um, project. We just have this, uh, the one invoice here for Coastal Engineering. Um, I don't know if you want to review this, John, but it's pretty standard kind of monthly billing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, again, our, our, our chief professional service fee was 50000 uh, Essentially, it was a 10-month project, so just to keep them to uh, accounting simple, we just kind of broke it up into five, uh, 10 equal payments of 5000 uh, sure. So those will be coming through monthly uh, from, from Coastal Engineering. Uh, there's no requisition from the contractor this month. Uh, maybe it'll be, uh, they'll be processing next, uh, next month. So okay. once we get our regular schedule uh, with the uh, contractor submittals, we'll be processing those as they come in. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments on the, the invoice here for the month to Coastal Engineering? No. Nope. All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve the invoice uh, to Coastal en Engineering for services rendered through March 31st in the amount of $5,000 even. Is there a second? Second. Second, second. 
Was that Joe? Yeah, I think. Second yep. by Joe and yes. <coughs> Second by Joe and East, we could do a, a roll call for the uh, fire station project, I believe, so that'd be great. Carol? Yes. Larry? Yes. Jim? Yes. Mike? Yes. Ron? Yes. Um, Captain McGowan is on for the fire station, correct? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. And Deputy Al Elliot's on also for uh, the fire station representative. Sorry, Al, I didn't know you were here. Yep. Al. Yeah, you know, I'm being pretty quiet, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the vote is unanimous, so the motion, uh, motion passes. Great. Okay. All right, any other final words on the, the fire station project? None, okay. Thank you for time yeah, tonight, John. Well, I pre appreciate it. All right, you're welcome, folks. Talk to you next time. Good. All right, uh, moving right along. So the public safety complex, Kevin C Kelly uh, was had some uh, a conflict tonight, so we couldn't be here. But he did send me a little update just quick. Uh, so Kevin has been working with GGG on this uh, HVAC for the uh, EOC room. They have conceptual design, they have uh, kind of everything spec'd out, everything worked up. He just needs to have a, um, you know, the next step is to have an on-site meeting with him just to review, finalize it, kind of sign, seal, deliver it, and then he'll get the proposal over to West for review, and then uh, then we'll be off and running. So some, some decent progress there, so hopefully we'll see that in the next meeting or so. Um, any questions or comments on that piece of work? Is there a budget? Any, uh, you got an idea of a budget on that? So we do have a hard budget, yeah. I think the project, uh, we closed it out. We kept some retained. I think there's like $34,000 left or something. Yeah, like it's 30. between 30 and 40. So it's between 30 and 40,000. There, there is a hard number though, Joe, that, that we re retained okay. um, for, the, for the project and that's, that's basically the last item we have hanging on that project, so good question. Okay. Anything else? No. No, okay. Uh, so the library, so moving right along, next item on the agenda is the library project update. Again, the, there's one remaining item is uh, the generator there. So Kevin says, you know, he's, he's getting slow but steady progress in that. He's still working up the submittal and, and trying to work with the engineer to get the design dial in to, to get it out for pricing and things like that. Um, I know I did have a question from the town. I, I guess I can answer this one here. So there was a question, why are we installing the generator and you know, why is it necessary? And I think you know we, we reviewed this some time ago and the, and the thought was it being a library, and if we ever lost power there, you know, there's no there's no backup for life safety systems, be it the fire system or, or uh, lighting and things like that. So you know, it, it'd be a shame if the building froze and the pipes broke, and it'd be a be kind of a tough scene there if we got <laughs> water all over the place. So I think in hindsight, that generator probably should have been included in the project at the, at the time. I, I wasn't around, but it was. Um, it probably should have been included in the project originally. I think that was a realization. I think it was a realization between us and the, and the board of select people and, and um, you know a lot of people around town saying that the place should have a generator just for the fact that to keep it climated and keep it keep, it, keep the life safety systems up in the event that we have a, a multi-day loss of loss of power. So uh, I don't know if anyone else has anything to add that they they recall from that. No, I just. I came to that project when it was uh, in progress, right? And one of my first questions was, I remember, "Why yeah. doesn't it have a generator?" Yeah. So you know, when you really look at the, yeah. the investment, this is really uh, just as another risk management uh, piece of equipment, similar to fire and life safety systems, as far as I'm concerned, for a facility like this. Right. Okay. So that's clear. They asked what the budget for the generator was. Uh, I, go ahead, Carl. Yep. If I could comment on that. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just, uh, this is just a point of information. Uh, I was involved in the project from the very beginning. And because of the condition of the building, early on we were using up a lot of the budget. That's right. And That's true, too. if I remember correctly, an emergency generator was always planned for it. And because of the, the uh, 
construction costs and the remediation that we had to do during the early phases, uh, that was one of the items that was cut out. That's a, that's so, a great point. And, and that's, that's just a little bit of background on it. Good. All right. Yeah, we all remember the pain of uh, covering all of that stuff. Yes, for sure. I bet. I wasn't involved, but I heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the budget for the generator is still in the works. It was still deciding on the, the mode of fuel for the generator and things like that. Um, there was a question on the location. You know, it would be behind the building where the main utilities come in to be adjacent to the main main power supply. Um, that's that's pretty evident where it would be located. Yeah, so that was that's just a little recap on, on the generator and why we need it and where it's going to go. And all that good stuff. So hopefully Kevin gets that detail ironed out. And I think I, I think the hang up is honestly the mode of fuel. He's still trying to get the together with the gas company to figure out if there's enough enough gas over there to uh, natural gas to, to fire the thing. If not, well, I think that's correct. Yes, I can comment on that. It makes it makes you know they were talking about going with diesel, and you know if you have a, a four or five day outage, which we know we can have in the town of situate. Yeah. Um, that means you're going to get a fuel truck. You're not going to get a four five day uh, fuel tank uh, capacity. You're only going to get a 48 hour at the most. Yeah. So if we can get gas, natural gas, even if it costs a couple of dollars more, it makes so much more sense. But the gas company has to tell you if they can give you the, uh, I don't know, they call it cubic, cubic inches per hour or something like that. I'm not a plumber, so I don't know, but <laughs> we'll find that out. Good. We'll okay. Find that out. It is, it is gas pressure. Gas pressure. Sure. So, anyways, end of, end, of the, end of the day, there's still more forward momentum on it, and it's just, it's just uh, slow and steady with that one. So, any other questions or comments on the library from the board? No. 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 I have more. No, no other comments. Okay. Uh, so moving right along. So uh, next item on the agenda: Does anybody have any old or new business or anything they, they'd like to discuss openly? No? Everybody's good? Nope. No. All right, good. All right, I'd like to make a, a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.46 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Carl. If you do a quick roll call with, uh, with the members here. Larry? Larry? Yes. Joe? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Steven? Yes. Carl? Yes. All right, so the meeting is, uh, is adjourned here. The vote is unanimous. Thank you, everybody, for your time, and I appreciate it.